you very much, uh, Dr. Abrigo, for such an informative and rich presentation. Uh, good morning to everyone who is attending this webinar. Special shout out, of course, to my Four Peace National Program Management Office family. Um, Pantawid Pamila Pilipino Program is continuously being corroborated as an influence to recon in keeping children in school and keeping them healthy and in changing the health and nutrition-seeking behaviors among beneficiaries. Both studies, to a certain extent, provided evidence through which the program can confident, confidently surmise that it improved school enrollment, enrollment, school attendance, and child immunization rates in a more general conditions, which had been consistent to a certain point with the findings of earlier 4 piece evaluation. Such confirmations of the positive impact of the program become significantly necessary as the program is closely being scrutinized by various oversight agencies, such as the legislative branch, commission and audit, among others. Being the top social protection intervention of the government of the Philippines for poverty reduction, social inclusion, and investment in human capital, subsequent results and findings of researches on the influence of the program on benefiting the health and education-seeking behaviors of the beneficiaries empirically supports the comprehensive financial investments of the government. Truthfully, the operationalization of the four Ps constitute significant cost for the government, but this is being justified by the impact to the, to the beneficiaries. Drawing from the experiences of CCT programs of other countries, the logical framework of the program seems linear. For human capital investment to be achieved, leading to the breaking of intergenerational poverty, governmental resources must be allocated in improving the health, nutrition, and education condition of the Filipinos through the investment in the human capital of the poor. Linear it may seem, it envisions that as children beneficiaries are able to finish high school, it increases their economic, state, their economic productivity to enter the formal employment workforce where they are able to earn more stable income, which eventually becomes the indication of breaking out from intergenerational poverty. As shown in the study, the characteristics of the parents of the household grantee or of the children beneficiaries indicate that they have lower propensity, propensity of, of reaching high school or completing college. Through the program, we are observing an increasing number of children surpassing educational attainment of their parents. However, it remains to be seen if the success of the program indeed confirms the logic of the program towards change of human capital investment in breaking intergenerational poverty. What, make both, what makes both studies stand out is it's veering away from the general condition through which the program impacts the beneficiaries. In essence, both studies look into the details to further inform the program for more responsive and relevant poly, policy actions to address seemingly, seemingly recurring bottlenecks. It provided empirical evidences on the recurring operational challenges of the program, thus may significantly rationalize first the efforts in retooling certain aspects of the implementation, range second, re-engineering its Pantawid information ecosystem, third, increasing the absorptive technical skills and competencies of its implementers, and lastly, and more importantly, increasing its commitment in adopting and utilizing Kilos Unlad 4P social case management strategy framework. The Department of Social Welfare and Development at the outset simply requires for the beneficiaries to attend school and visit health centers. Contingent for the receipt of the grants, it expects beneficiaries to bring their children to schools and health centers. However, there remains to be gaps in the compliance of the students. This includes, but not limited to, age appropriateness to grade level, which deters the confidence of the beneficiary to attend school, the distance of the education and health facilities, the supply availability and quality gaps, among others. While the program strengthens the utilization of social case management in addressing the non-compliance of the beneficiary, it will never be sufficient if not complemented by the appropriate intervention or complementary response of the other external stakeholders. The concern of the availability of education facility becomes a pressing concern for high school levels. While child development centers and elementary schools are almost present to every barangay, 
thus making it more accessible for beneficiaries. High school facilities are always farther away. The study shows that the further away these facilities, it affects the beneficiary's compliance considering the transportation costs it entails. And this transportation expense becomes a secondary priority for household consumption, especially for poorer households. This is indeed a good policy concern for local government units to have a more positive action. Considering the huge investment returns for high school level completion, especially on its potential impact on the economy, there is a need for a more serious intervention in providing transportation service for high school-aged children. This may be initiated by either the barangay or the municipal local government units. These will definitely allay the financial burden among the poor in making ends meet in keeping their children in school. Also, increasing the amount of crash grants for senior high school is an option which is currently being looked into for its viability. While the program is keeping more children in school and more children visiting health centers, there is, however, concern on supply availability of the education and health facilities. This is further exacerbated with the issue of the quality of the source social service delivery along health and education. Note that this is already beyond the purview of the program and indeed requires closer intervention for both the Department of Education and the Department of Health. From the development perspective, it is a disservice to the poor to deprive them quality delivery of services. While the four piece of theory of change seems linear by keeping children in school, the maximization of the utility can never be attained if the facilities themselves are falling behind in the quality of service delivery. The impact of four piece of keeping children in school will never be maximized if the facilities are not well equipped. Making children visit health, health centers will never be optimized if they can never avail, avail age-appropriate interventions. The extent through which the DSWD can impact society by bringing them to school and visiting health center is clearly defined. Part of its strategic priority is its continuous collaboration with these national government agencies to address its supply and quality gaps to complement the efforts of the program for the poor household. The result on the impact of the program to monitor and non-monitor children of the four piece beneficiary is indeed timely as it empirically supports the recent assessment and consideration of the program towards becoming more conscientious of its impact in improving the education seeking behavior among the poor household. Unfortunately, the, po the program did not positively contribute to the children who were not monitored for the provision of cash grants, especially for older children. While this may have been an unintended consequence, it completely agrees with the recommendation to restructure its current monitoring protocol, which will not only be limited to three children, but if possible, all of the children of the poor household. This may not necessarily mean expanding the coverage of the program and providing additional financial assistance, since this will really require extensive financial requirement. The proposal of including all of the children in the monitoring of the compliance of the household may potentially contribute to a more holistic education-seeking behavior among the beneficiaries. This is consistent with one of the indicators in the social welfare and development indicators is specifically on the enrollment on school of children aged 3 to 17 years old in formal or informal school. On an operational perspective, at the immediate timeline, it will indeed require additional man hours and financial resources for the administrative and logistical arrangement in capturing the attendance of children. However, in light of the fourth industrial revolution on increasing trends towards digital transformation, the interoperability of the information of the DSWD and DEPED become more imperative than ever. It prompts to further move forward the data integration, considering that the DEPED captures the monthly attendance of the students. With systems integration of both agencies, it will definitely cut down financial burden on administratively monitoring compliance of the students. And it also frees up the time for the implementers to refocus to what is more important and necessary. It will, more, it will provide more opportunities for the DSWD field implementers to focus more on its 
social case management in addressing gaps and challenges for the non-attendance and non-compliance of the beneficiaries. Further, it allow more opportunities for both the PSWD field implementers or case managers and the beneficiaries to work together in addressing their social and economic needs and map out plans and intervention to improve their level of well-being. In conclusion, both studies came at the perfect time as it first validates the efforts of the capital development of the board but more importantly, supports the strategic priorities of the DSWD towards more inclusive and responsive social protection intervention. It solidifies the strength and commitment for the utilization and integration of social case management to address the difficulties of the beneficiaries in their compliance, the program conditionalities, and in improving their level of well-being towards self-sufficiency. The results of the findings are indeed worth closely looking into and will definitely be considered in informing policy and program management development. The DSWD, on behalf of uh, the National Program Manager, the Assistant Secretary, and the Undersecretary for the NHTS and for Peace Cluster, and also the, se the Secretary, we extend our sincere appreciation to the Philippine Institute of Development Study for being its important partner in providing empirical evidence as basis for the improvement and development of our program. Maraming maraming salamat po.